Hey everyone, I'm Brooke and welcome back to my channel. So last week Apple released macOS Sonoma with about a hundred new features for our Macs and I'll add a screenshot of all of the Macs that are eligible for this software update, but it's basically any Mac from about 2019 or newer. And similarly to my iOS 17 video, which I will link above in case you haven't checked that one out yet, I'm not gonna go through all 100 features because we would be here for hours. I'm gonna boil it down to the coolest features, the best features, the features I think everyone should care about. Definitely the most aesthetically pleasing new features are these dynamic wallpapers. It actually starts from your lock screen. So when your computer's locked, you'll see the wallpaper screensaver moving like you would on Apple TV. And then when you go to unlock your computer, it's gonna basically freeze frame and make your desktop picture. So they're stunning, they're incredible, I love them so much. You would set this up in settings. The quickest way to get there is right clicking on your desktop and going to change wallpaper. Now when you scroll down, you'll see different options like landscape, cityscape, underwater, earth. I'm a big cityscape person. That's definitely what I'm partial to right now. And so when you click show all, you can see all the different ones and select an individual wallpaper. Or if you're indecisive, like me, you can scroll down even more to the shuffle section. And so you can shuffle all of them, or you can shuffle all landscape, all cityscape. That's definitely what I've been doing. So I've been clicking shuffle cityscape, and I've actually been changing it at the top here from every 12 hours to continuously, because that's how obsessed I am with them. And one word of warning here, these dynamic wallpapers are essentially individual videos. So they do take up quite a bit of storage, especially because they're such high quality. So if you are worried about storage on your computer, I would maybe steer clear of downloading a bunch or downloading one of the shuffles. Maybe stick to one or two to save space on your Mac. Next, the desktop itself received a bunch of new features. The easiest one, probably the ability to click to reveal the desktop. So if you have a ton of windows open and you wanna access your desktop quickly, maybe you have a PDF saved on your desktop that you wanna see, now you can just click anywhere on your wallpaper. All of your open windows will basically disappear so that you can see your desktop. And to bring it all back, you would just have to click the desktop again or the wallpaper again to bring the windows back. Now, if you're someone who's accidentally hitting your wallpaper quite a bit, and all your windows fly away, that could be a little bit jarring. So if you do wanna turn this off, you can do so in settings. And you would just go to desktop and dock, scroll down a little bit to click wallpaper to reveal desktop, and you would switch it from always to only in stage manager. The biggest change to the desktop though is the ability to add widgets to your desktop now, which is pretty cool. And I have to say, I wasn't sure if I was gonna like this at first because I do generally like a very minimalist and clean desktop, but it's working for me. And I do like that this is now something that's across basically the Apple ecosystem because you can add widgets to your iPhone, you can add widgets to your iPad. So it makes sense that they've now added it to the Mac just to kind of streamline the entire experience. So I am appreciating that. We've had widgets on the Mac for a while now, but they were always in the notification center only. So now the new ability here is really to be able to have widgets on the desktop itself. And so it's super easy to do, like to start off, you can just drag a widget from the notification center onto your desktop really easily. And same thing in reverse, I can drag it back to the notification center. So you can really customize this to what information you wanna see all the time on your desktop and then what you do wanna be hidden in the notification center. The other thing is right clicking on your desktop, you can hit edit widgets now and it'll bring up all of the widgets available for the desktop. Now, what you're gonna see though for some apps is if I go down to Carrot, for example, there's gonna be a little label in the top right that says from iPhone. So I can still add this to my desktop and drag it and move it around. However, it's really pulling this app from my phone. So although I can see it, the information in the widget will only update if my phone is nearby or if my phone is on the same Wi-Fi as my computer. However, if I go down to batteries, for example, 
There's no label in the top right hand corner saying from iPhone. So this is a native widget to my computer. So that's just something to keep in mind with the widgets because the other time this comes into play is when I actually want to open a widget or interact with the widget. If it's an app on my computer, when I click on it, the app will open itself and I can do whatever I need to do in the app. But if it's an app or a widget from my iPhone, when I click on the widget, it's going to tell me to open the widget in my phone. So it's not a huge deal breaker, but just something to keep in mind when you're adding these widgets. And then if you want to customize the widgets, it's really easy. You can just right click on any widget to change the size of it. So maybe you want to turn it into a smaller widget. Maybe you want to remove the widget altogether. You can just right click and do that super easily. The other thing you can customize is the coloring of the widgets. So mine, I have pretty neutral. They kind of like blend into the desktop because again, I like a desktop that's a little bit less distracting. By default, it's going to be on automatic. So you're going to see when I go back to my desktop, they're full color. And when you open a window, that is when they kind of fade and mute to the background so that it's less distracting when you actually have a window open and are looking at it. And then when you close the window, they're going to go back to full color. But going into settings, that's where you can customize this more. So desktop and dock, I've changed it from automatic to monochrome so that it's always the kind of muted faded coloring. But if you always want it to be full color, you can change it to that as well. So you can customize that a little bit here. And then while we're here, if you don't want your iPhone widgets to even show up as an option at all, you can turn that off. The next thing that got a ton of updates is Safari. And this is pretty cool because now you have the ability to create different profiles in Safari. So if you want to separate let's say your personal browsing from your work browsing and your school browsing, you can create these different profiles and switch between them very easily. So to set up a new profile, you click Safari from the menu bar, and then you may or may not see a manage profile options. If you don't, just click on the settings option and head over to profiles and you'll see the same thing. So then to create a new profile, you would hit the plus button on the left you can name it whatever makes sense. So let's say I want this one to be called work. You can choose an icon. Sure, let's just go with this office building. You can change colors if you want it to be associated with a certain color. And then you can either create new bookmarks folder for this profile or use an existing one. So if you are already putting all of your work bookmarks in its own folder, you can just import that over essentially for this new profile. You would create, hit create profile. So definitely see a few things here. It's now changed the background, the green color we've associated with this profile. I really don't like that. I'll show you how to change that in a second. But the other thing to note here is now you're gonna see an extensions tab under work. So if there are certain extensions that you maybe want to use for personal, but you, that you know you're never gonna use on your work profile, let's say, you know, Shopping, probably not going to be shopping on my work profile. You can check off whichever extensions make sense for this profile. So to customize this new profile a little bit more, you can right click and clear the background. So that's the first thing. Let's get rid of the color. But you'll notice that the work label in the top left is still the green. So it's easy to kind of tell which tab you're on. But if you wanted to choose a different background, you can actually load your own background on here. And then you can also decide what you want to see. So maybe you want to see the privacy report or not, like you can add some different viewing options here. And then so if you want to add new favorites or new bookmarks for this work profile, it's the same way you would do it before. So maybe we're going to use Google, let's say Google Translate a lot for work. So once we get to the page, just going to hit the little button on the right, say add bookmark, and we're going to make sure we're adding it to our new work folder. Now, when we go back to our start screen for our work profile, we're going to see the new favorite 
we've added. And the best part is if you have different accounts, like let's say you have different Gmail accounts, you have a personal Gmail account and a work Gmail account. When you log in in the work profile with your work Gmail, it's gonna remember the work Gmail with the work profile. When you go to your personal and log into your personal Gmail, it's gonna remember your personal profile with your personal Gmail. So it's really easy. You only have to log in once and then everything you need for that personal profile or that work profile will be saved. So you don't have to sign in or switch between accounts, which was so annoying before. Now Safari is gonna save all of them for you and just make your life so much easier. If you want to open one right from the desktop or from the dock, you can just right click new window and pick whichever one you want. Otherwise switch to whichever profile you wanna be in from there. So the other really cool Safari feature are these web apps. And so if there's any websites that you visit very frequently and would like to see in your dock, as opposed to opening Safari and going to the website every time, you can now create a web app from a website to add it down to your dock. What you would do is you would go to the website. So let's say Google Translate is something I use a lot. I'm going to go to file down to add to doc. I can rename it. Let's just maybe call it translate. If I wanted to change the logo, I could add any image to it, but that G is fine for now. And I'm going to click add. So now you're going to see down on my dock, I have a translate app and I can move it around just like any other app in my dock. So now if I wanna to go to Translate and when I click on it, it's gonna open up Translate in its own web app. So this is not Safari and you can see looking at your menu bar, it says Translate, it does not say Safari. So they've tried to create like as close to an app as possible for any website that you convert into a web app and add to your doc. The next big set of new features is for FaceTime and video conferencing. And they're honestly pretty cool. So if we open up FaceTime, you're gonna see a few new options now in the menu bar. So if you click on the FaceTime icon, you'll see the ability to add portrait, which is gonna blur the background. And you can click on the little arrow to control how much blur you want. You can also add studio lighting and again, there's a slider to control how much of a studio light effect you want. So this just kind of makes it a little bit more professional if you want. And there's also new reactions. So if you click on the little arrow, you can just click on one of the reactions to activate it essentially. And then the person you're FaceTiming with is also going to see these reactions. Or for some of them, if you hold up like a thumbs up to the camera, it's gonna recognize it and show the reaction itself. And the same thing for video conferencing. So if you use Zoom or Microsoft Teams a lot, you'll have the same options for your camera with the portrait, studio lights, and reactions in Zoom as well. But the biggest feature for video conferencing is this new presenter mode or presenter overlay. And this happens when you're sharing your screen. So if I go to share my screen, I'm gonna see the icon in the menu bar is now this blue share screen icon. And when I press on that, I'm gonna see this presenter overlay. It's honestly kind of cool. So if you click the small, it basically takes your face, your video, and puts you in a little circle at the bottom. Or you also have this large option. So if you click large, it puts you front and center essentially, and then whatever you're sharing or your slides behind you. I will add Apple's link to all of the new features in the description box down below in case you wanted to give that a read. But if you did find value out of today's video, please go ahead and give it a thumbs up. It really helps the algorithm. Leave me a comment letting me know what your favorite Sonoma feature is so far. And if not already, please subscribe to the channel for more videos. That's it, have a great day, bye.